Hey guys, Train Freak here, and you're probably seeing a train go by, and this is a locomotive that you would typically not see on my previous layout. This is an Alco RS1, and it's the Rock Island. Now, why do I have the Rock Island running on this layout? Well, we're fixing to get to that in a minute. So, today we're going to talk about the new layout that I'm going to be building called the Delta Pines subdivision railroad and it is going to be mainly a point to point with balloon loops on either end which will allow uh, for running trains from point A to point B and then they can you know loop back and go so it's good for a rail fanner but we're also going to incorporate a whole bunch of industries and a seven track uh, yard so that way we can have some operation sessions to go with it. So before I get into digging down into that, um, tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, typically it would be on my channel. This week it's going to be on Rainbow Bells. We are going to have a Father's Day special. And since Ray is the father of Sidetrack Sunday, or founding father, whatever you want to call him, uh, we decided to let him host it. So be sure to check out Sidetrack Sunday tonight at 8 o'clock. I think the whole crew will be on, and I have no clue what Ray's got up his sleeve. So be sure to check it out. All right, so let's get into the design. All right, everyone. So now I've pulled up my AnyRail 6 software, and just to state, this is not a endorsement to AnyRail 6, nor am I being sponsored and being paid to promote any rail six this is just the software that i use um, because it's simple and it's easy and i'm sure there's other great softwares out there as well so let's look at the overall this is the design that i came up with um, now to give you a little history i've been into model railroading since 2008 i'm not including my childhood before because it was just putting track on the floor but actual model railroading since 2008, I started with a 4x8 sheet of plywood and did oval layouts from there. Um, here, about 20, 2018s when I started getting bored with it. And at that time, I had a 14 by 16 layout that you actually went into the middle of and the trains would actually go around you. And I just got tired of it. Um, and whatnot and i had some friends say well dude why don't you uh get into operations because i almost quit this hobby i really came close and i was like well i don't know nothing about it so i researched it it looked interesting um i was watching uh channels like eric hall you know imrro.com uh, ron's trains and things ron marsh he kind of had a few videos of his operation stuff on there um cousin Vinny, bnsf 6951 is another one and there was several other channels, and I'm like, this this I could get into. And the other thing is, is you know, we don't have any clubs in Central Arkansas. We used to have two, and they have folded for I don't know why. But there's no active clubs in Central Arkansas. The closest one to me is probably Memphis, which is like a three-hour drive away. And, and I'm I'm not going to drive three hours just to go run trains you know, and then drive three hours to go back home because six hour drive, that's, that's almost half my day. So I was like, nah, but I was thinking, well, maybe I could build my own layout, maybe have some friends that, you know, have layouts as well come and maybe they want to run trains too. And so I was thinking like, okay, well, let's, let's do this. So I started building a layout, uh, in October of 19, and that was before I got on YouTube. I got on YouTube in May of 20, which has been a little more than a year ago. And I was building, in the process of building a three-level layout. I was learning about operations, learning about staging, things like that. And the space that I was working with just really wasn't conducive um, because it was in a garage. It was really hot in the summertime and it was really cold in the wintertime. Um, and of course, you know, with our heat here in Arkansas, we have really high humidity. So you folks out west, I have been out west, and I will tell you, I would prefer to 
to spend a whole week out west with 110 degree temperatures than 90 degree temperatures here with 100% humidity. So, been there, done that. Um, so, things really changed February of 21 when Snowmageddon hit. And we call it Snowmageddon because we got more snow in a two weeks time period than we did in the past 20 years total. I mean, it was insane for us. Even the Postal Service had to stop running because they couldn't get around. Because we're not used to that down here. You up north, I know y'all are used to it because y'all get it every year. We, we don't down here. And so, one of the issues I had was, okay, I'm off work 10 straight days, but I can't go play trains. I can't work on my layout. It's too cold. I couldn't even heat it um, because the high the high for the whole period was in the 20s, you know, so we're below freezing. Then the other issue I ran into is at the top of my garage door, there was a slit wide enough that these birds were getting in my garage and they were dropping bombs on my layout. Yeah, it, crappy situation, right? So I had a heart-to-heart, -heart, you know, moment with uh, Miss Freak and I was like, I'm, I almost wanted to quit again, and, you know, she was like, well, what, let's, you know, what about closing in the garage, you know, maybe insulate it, and I was like, I would go for that, because I was like, either that, or I want a train shed like Sparky 107, 107, and Robert with the Flying Crow, I mean, they got train sheds, she said it would be a lot cheaper to close that garage in, I was like, yeah, but that means we're not going to be able to go in and out of the house through the garage anymore, she was like, I know, so, sacrifices had to be made, but that's fine. So, that's why we're in the process of doing that. Um, because she knows what this YouTube channel means to me and, and Junior. So, it's what we do now, and we've made some awesome friends because of it. So, now since I've got this full-size room, this is the layout I came up with. Like I said before, operations. Also, I want long mainline runs. I want a point-to-point -point layout, but I want to make it to where if I got family coming by, they don't want to run a train, but they just want to see one run. Balloon loops at both ends, and that allows the train to go back and forth between the whole layout. This layout here is going to be a bi-level layout. There's no reason I need to go triple level. It's just I don't... I got, I got more than enough space you know to know what to do with so so this is what i've got um so i decided to go with the spiral i have got two obstacles to work around and that's the doorway which is actually right here i've got a metal storage cabinet here so the doorway is not five feet wide but it gives me a good point to look at to see where does the bench work need to start i've also got this attic access that has a drop down ladder uh, my HVAC unit's up in the attic, so I have to keep this open because I don't want to tear, you know, the layout out if something was to happen. So, got to keep that open. And then I was thinking, okay, well, this would be a good spot for a dispatcher. Maybe put the dispatcher's desk right here. Uh, put a TV on the wall between the levels, and that way the dispatcher really can't see anything of what's going on. The other thing I had to make sure that I did was enough walk space. So I've got three feet of walk space here, uh, about three and a half here. We got three feet here, and then of course six feet here. Plenty of space here, right? And so if you got four or five people in this area, you want to you want them to be able to get around each other. So that was another thing as well. Now because of the center, I wanted some better stability. So this yellow thing here actually represents a stud wall, 45'd it, and went up that way with it. All right, um, staging. This is the staging area here, but also now because I'm doing this spiral, I can add a staging track here, which is going to be really cool because I've got a short line that literally just runs into the yard. It drops off a cut of cars. It runs back out of the yard. Um, it's not servicing any industries. And then also, we're going to be putting in an interchange for another Class 1 railroad 
but you've already seen that locomotive go by just a minute ago and do some more complex switching there. Um, so the dispatcher now has access not to two staging platforms, but a total of four, which is going to be really cool. Um, today, um, I'm just going to go over level one. Level two and some of the other details will be on part two of this video series. So let me pull up the track for level one. And let me explain about my design, why I went with it, and go from there. We're going to zoom in just to make this a little easier and more visual friendly. Okay, let's start at the bottom. So we've got a total of five tracks here. Actually, four of them are only for staging. This fifth track is um, it's a yard lead for the switcher, and I just wanted to make sure it was long enough. Uh, to do at least a cut of cars. Um, and then, of course, what I was thinking about doing is maybe putting some isolators here and wiring this piece of track here on a separate uh, thing where I could put it on a three-way three switch to make that track also a programming track. So I can do that as well. All right, um, so train comes in on the main here which is this loop here and it can either come straight across the layout this way on the main or it can go into the yard this big black thing line here that is a backdrop and it's going to be a removable or sliding backdrop so that way if something was to derail in this area i can slide it out and be able to get in there without hopefully damaging something Balloon loop is designed to go through the backdrop and around so that way it looks like, hey, if I got a train coming this way, train leaves the layout. By the time the train gets around these buildings, oh, it's another train. Not really, it's the same train, but it looks like two separate trains. So it's just kind of an illusion type thing. Um, so like I said, this is the yard lead. I'm probably not going to need that whole length, but it's there just in case. All right. Um, oh, went too far. So here we got a roundhouse, a machine shop at the bottom, plenty of tracks for the yard engine facilities. I did not want anything on this side because I want you to be able to see everything. I felt like that was a great spot to put inside the balloon loop. I think Steve Childers with the Retirement Railroad has his inside of a balloon loop as well. Um, have an inbound and an outbound locomotive track so that way as the inbound comes in it can get refueled. Uh, or if it's steam, it could get, re you know, water, sand, you name it. This track here is actually for covered hoppers and tank cars. Covered hoppers bring in sand. Tank cars bring in diesel fuel and potable water. Um, and then this other track here is just to allow that locomotive to sit and we can consist another one to it if needed. And then they can pull out and go together. This right here is just a cross sing. It is not a slip of any kind because this is a main line that's crossing and this is just the engine facility speed right there. All right, so if a train comes in and it crosses into the yard ladder or the yard lead, the train will end up taking this first uh, angle track, which I'm gonna slide up a little bit will take it to either this track or this track, which are my two arrival departure tracks. I've got this piece in here for a runaround, which I'll explain in a minute. Got a caboose track here, which the cabooses will probably be down closer to this end. And that allows a locomotive to be able to do a runaround. You know, if it's got that tank car with diesel fuel, locomotive's gonna need to be able to run around it so it can push it into this track here. So, something to keep in mind. I had to put in a run around somewhere. But this is the caboose track in the middle. And then this track here is actually going to have a scale. I put in a re-railer, but it's actually going to be one of my Walther's Cornerstone scales. Uh, Split Rock is being very kind and generous to um, make the rails for me because it's actually the heavy duty scale, which has four rails on it. And a couple of turnouts so he's actually going to be working on that for me but this is where the scale is going to go uh, worst case if i need more real estate i can slide it closer to this turnout 
Um, and super worst case, I can take this turnout out, have a straight piece of track to this curve, and start the ladder right here. Which, of course, each track's going to get a little shorter, but hey, sometimes you got to do with what you got to do with the space that you have to work with for the things that you want. And I felt like a scale track would be really cool. Um, it gives the yard master something extra to do than just to pull a cut of cars and build a train. Now they got to weigh it. So that way he can tell the, um, the engineer who's driving, oh, yeah, you're going to need this many locomotives to be able to pull that sucker up the helix. So something cool to consider. Uh, but the total yard is actually seven tracks. So we've got two arrival departures, five classifications. And then, of course, you got your main over here that has an extra inch of spacing. So that way the mainline trains do not have to slow down to yard speeds which is actually prototypical. Oops, I did not mean to do that. All right, sliding back up. Now, as the yard curves around, the top, the last three tracks, uh, tracks uh, five, six, and seven, are gonna be able to access the ice dock and also be able to access maintenance away storage and the car shops this uh, which is three tracks and this is for cars to go that have like that needs repairs uh, this track is actually the track that services the car shops it could be a boxcar bringing couplers it could be a gondola bringing railroad wheels it could be an empty gondola picking up scrap metal so that's this is just it acts as an industry um, which helps with the operations Ice dock, that is all for the ice bunker reefers that are only going to be ran on the 1960 era. I will cover more about my eras in part two because I don't want to make this video too long. And then these two classification tracks here are just going to be stub-ended. Um, this is the north side of the yard, which you only have access to the arrival and departure tracks. All right, so... Coming a little farther, this is Bluff City, and we can call this Bluff City Industrial or the edge of Bluff City, whatever we want to call, um, because the yard is called Bluff City Yard. Um, High Stake Ranch is only going to be operated in 1960, and I thought, you know, incorporating that here would be probably the best spot I could find. Um, I might have to modify how the track and stuff is angled here if need be. So no major worries on that. On the other side of the double track main, we have Kilowatt Power Company. I might change the name to it and go with a more prototypical um, name, which would have been probably APNL, which is Arkansas Power and Light. But I thought Kilowatt was kind of funny, so I'm, I might change it, I might not. Hey, throw in your suggestions. Should I keep it? Should I change it to, you know, APNL? Let me know. Um, I think APNL used the kilowatt or ready kilowatt logo, if I'm not mistaken, as well. But my goals on this uh, track here is to eventually put in a rotary dumper. And the powerhouse would probably be sitting right here. And the rotary dumper could dump coal under the underground chute to the powerhouse. And what we could do to incorporate this for any of the three eras is um, put in actual coal loads from Woodland Scenics and run a coal unit train uh, to where it's dumping that coal. And it would dump into a bin underneath. We could pull the empties up to staging on two. And that's where those would end up going then of course dispatch is going to have to take those and move those back down to one eventually and refill the coal for the next op session but i thought that would be a really cool neat idea uh to do okay so coming around the curve we've got the southwestern freight company this is that building that craig was very generous uh, from arkansas traveler hobbies he gave me that really cool freight depot and so that depot is going to set here, and if you remembered, um, it had two ramps um, with space for a track in the middle. So that's that track in the middle of the two ramps. Um, 
And then of course, Bluff City, this will be all my city stuff here. And the double track main will convert down to a single. I will have a station over here. Uh, typically your bigger cities, the stations and the freight depots were not in the same building. They were actually in separate areas. Um, sometimes the freight uh, depots are right across the track from the station. So that way um, hot shot loads would not be interfering with passenger type things. Smaller towns, they were in the same building. And then, of course, the track, like I said, goes into a single up into the helix um, with another backdrop here. Um, and, of course, the helix will not be visible from this area or this area. It will be completely enclosed. The center of it will be completely hollow. So if there is a derail from the inside or if there is a derail in the helix, we'll be able to climb inside and fix it. Um, the track radiuses for the whole layout on the main lines is 30 inch radiuses. Uh, anything industry is a minimum of 24 inches. Um, and that's so that way we have a good flow with the longer cars. Um, now down here we have another staging track which is the Ashley Drew and Northern. Um, that services Georgia Pacific. Um, which is a chip wood plant, so it's going to be receiving wood chips and sending out um, lump, you know, plywood type stuff. Um, going back to radiuses, the helix, it's a 32 inch radius, so from here to here is 64 inches. It takes up a lot of real estate. A uh, four inch rise, and that's going to give me a 2% grade, and because it's gradual, the um, the grade's not, it'll actually not be so tough at pulling cars up. Um, probably two locomotives would easily be able to pull up 30 to 40 cars with no problem. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything as far as level one goes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you look at the whole thing again. Um, definitely a lot of track is definitely going to go into this. A lot of tortoise switches. Uh, things that I plan on doing in like this area will have a button board where you can control all your turnouts here um, and possibly well these turnouts as well and then we'll have a button board on this area where you can control those turnouts this area and this area and possibly a button board here in the corner that will allow you to control these and these um, I do not want any hand throws on my layout because I don't want the risk of anyone reaching in and damaging some piece of scenery um, because I am going to have trees and stuff that's going to kind of hide some of the track. We want to make this look as realistic as possible. So, and I know like 1960 they didn't have interlocking switches for the most part and I know that's correct, um, but I'm more concerned about the safety of the layout. So I figured button boards where pressing a button would turn a throw is probably the best option to go with. Now also you can't really see it, but the scale tracks also got two other turnouts that's going to have tortoise switches. Those would have manuals because the, uh, the way that scale track works, you've got four rails. This pair of rails here is for anything that's not being weighed, especially locomotives. You don't want to run locomotives on the weighed rails. And these are the ones that are being weighed. So you have to be able to control those two uh, turnouts independently. So, all right. Um, other than that, that's really all I've got for this video. Uh, stay tuned uh, next week to part two, uh, where we talk about the top level, which is talking about that interchange with the Rock Island. Now, since you got to see the locomotive and the caboose at the very end of the short clip at the beginning, and we're going to talk about some other um, possible unit trains and some really complex uh, switching in an industrial uh, complex. That's, I think it's got four or five industries. Um, and then also I've got, I know, three industries on level two that I do not have names for. Um, don't even know what I'm going to put there, so I definitely want your input on that as well. Um, 
you know, just to kind of help me out type thing. So please uh, stay tuned to see that next week. Um, other than that, uh, we got Sidetrack Sunday, 8 o'clock tonight, Father's Day special on Ray Bo Bell's channel. That's correct. It's not on my channel. Ray Bo Bell's, I will be next week. And then um, I also want to say thank you to all of you channel sponsors um, or extended supporters, however you like to be called, those that are um, Patreon members or they purchase things off my Teespring store, even, you know, Train Freak Jr. stuff. And uh, to help him with his layout. And, um, you know, the donations through PayPal.me. That really helps the progress of this channel. And allows me to fund, you know, these really cool contests that I throw at every 100 subscribers. Which we just had the 700 subscriber contest. And hopefully it won't take us long to get to 800. So we can give more stuff away. So, um, but if you're interested in becoming a channel sponsor... Uh, you can check the links down in the description below. Um, but other than that, uh, y'all be safe out there. Have a great week and happy...